Charlotte Coffee. How the Ellen Show Changed My Life. Charlotte. How the Ellen Show Changed My Life, Charlotte Coffee. and very welcome guests. I knew I would never be in the audience of a TV show. I was never going to be the one forced to cheer like some well reversed <laughs> corgi every time the applause sign would go on and off, on and off. And I knew that I never wanted to be the one with the camera catching my eyeballs going like this. <laughs> Did you say that before? I knew this would never be me because I was the executive behind the camera. I worked at a big studio. I had a title. I had power. It was me who was often in the control room calling the shots. Hey, we want that segment shorter. Tell the talent to ask this question. And for goodness sakes, don't shoot that part of the audience. They're missing some teeth. <laughs> <laughs> and that is when my studio let me go. On a Friday, laid off, goodbye, eight years. On Saturday, I went into my office to pack up. And I chose Saturday because I didn't want anyone else to see me do it. I was humiliated. Just the day before, my office had been full and lively, and now empty. I really felt worthless. Anyone relate? <laughs> On Monday, I didn't set the alarm. I slept till 10 o'clock. And just as I was wondering, why didn't they let that <coughs> creepy, lazy Jerry go instead of me? <laughs> the phone rings. It's my friend. She has two tickets to the Ellen DeGeneres show. And not just any Ellen show. This was one of the hottest tickets in town. This was to be in the audience of one of Ellen's 12-day Christmas mm. gift Giveaway shows. <laughs> <laughs> and so I went. Much to my chagrin, I was on camera many, many times. <laughs> I TV'd the show and I watched myself over and over again. It was one of the most humbling experiences. <laughs> As I watched from the privacy of my home, it brought home the reality that for the first time in 25 years, I was unemployed. If I had had a job, I wouldn't have had two hours to spend in Ellen's waiting line as we slowly snaked our way around corners. It was as if we were waiting for some fabulous ride at Disneyland. And I certainly wouldn't have had another two hours to sit in the audience while makeup was applied and cameras reset. But the truth was, I had all the time in the world. Mm -hmm. I felt a sadness come over me that I wasn't prepared for. I deeply mourned this loss. Television was in my veins. Not only wasn't I working, but I would no longer be in the industry I would love so much. I have remembrances of being four years old, playing on the floor while my mom ironed and watched her soaps. I see some nods out there. <laughs> I remember running home from school to watch my favorite shows before doing homework. 
And when Smokey the Bear, remember that bear? He would say, only you can prevent forest fires. He meant me. All of a sudden, my voice no longer counted. I did not have to be somewhere the next day. I started thinking about this loss, and I realized that in an odd way, this loss and this grief gave me permission to look to the future, my future. Being in that audience didn't mean I couldn't participate. It was the opposite. Being in that audience, one of 300, was participation. It meant that I was part of a bigger picture. I realized I could and I would move forward. Losing a job opens a new door, but I like to say a new production. And we are all producers. By the way, I walked away with a motherload of Ellen gift goods. <laughs> <laughs> Ellen's elves packed our cars with a PlayStation 3, a Hulu Plus, a Dyson vacuum cleaner, and what would be most appropriate for me? A 42-inch flat screen television. <laughs> <laughs> but I walked away with much, much more. I knew I had a title. I had power. I was in charge of my own control room. And as I stand before all of you today, I look forward to what my next personal show will be. And for those of you in a similar situation, sitting in the audience, I say, I urge, get out there and start your next show. Mr. Cook.